Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to pass the user ID to the products component without using any state library. So I am starting off with the branch 13 base. If you'd like to follow along, you can clone that. Basically what this branch is, is without Redux, without Apollo link state. Um, and we have in our check token, we're just fetching a new token and a user ID and currently doing nothing with this user ID. So the first approach with this that we can take is just to store in async storage um, another thing. And I think there is a way actually to um, set multiple items at the same time, but this is a temporary thing. So we can set a user ID here. And then in our other component, we can just grab this user ID. Um, so we're setting that, and then over here in my products, now. I'm going to have to make this into a regular component to be able to get that user ID because it's going to be an async call that we have to make and you don't want to have those um, at least like that inside of your component. Okay, so let's make this into a class and this is going to be our render function here and this is going to extend react.component. And then we're going to say const, and we get all these items from the props. And we're just going to close our component. And let's make sure we're not missing anything. I think we're good. I don't know why I'm getting red. Uh, return. Oh, we have that. There we go. Give that a save. So now what I can do is I can store in this state what the current user ID is. So at the wing, it's just going to be null. So user ID null. And now in my component, I'm going to say component did mount. And we're going to make this into an asynchronous function. So now in this async function, we can just say const um, user ID, or we don't even have to, we can just say this dot set state and we're going to update the user ID. And, oops, and we don't want a semicolon there. And then this is going to be async storage dot get item user ID. So we're awaiting it because it's asynchronous and we just need to import it from up here async storage. Alright, so then in our render function we can now conditionally render it. Now the other way we're going to do this is with using a library called JWT decode, but we'll talk about that in a second. I'm just going to copy the code that we had before and we can just paste it. I think I pasted it. Was it right underneath the text? Yeah. So this is the code we uh, made in the other video. And we're just going to say this dot state dot user ID. So if it's equal to the seller's ID, then we display right here uh, that item. And we can also grab the style for it because we don't have that right now. And all right, let's give that a save. And now we correctly see the edit and the delete. Uh, just on the products that we want. So nice. So alternate way, we didn't do any type of state management library. We just got it from async storage, right? Because we're storing it in that. The reason why I like the uh, using a state management, at least uh, in general, is because you don't have to then do this uh, async and then wait in the component mount to update like this. Um, and it's easy, you can add it to any component but just by like connecting um, to the Redux store. So that was the reason, but in this case, this is probably a cleaner solution because we don't have to update, um, <clears throat> or only one component really needs this, right? Maybe if we needed other components, it's worth adding Redux or Apollo link state um, when that's fixed. but. Here's the other way you can do this. So we made another token here, right? Or not another token, but another 
item in async storage and this is kind of redundant because we're already storing the user ID inside our JWT token. That's kind of the cool thing about JWT tokens is they also store information. So we can actually delete that and we actually don't even need to request this the user ID anymore. Um, we can just get rid of that from the GraphQL request because we can get it from our token. So I'm going to say const token is equal to and we can just say await and here and now we have to say token here token key and we have an error right now because we don't have the user ID so how do we extract the user ID from a token well that's when this library over here comes in called JWT decode what this does is just takes a JWT token and as you can see does that to it right makes into the object or decodes it into the object that is stored in there and then we can grab the user ID from it all right so let's download this library um, so we're gonna say yarn add and then we can just add this to the top so import uh, JWT decode from JWT decode And now I can say const user ID is equal to uh, JWT decode, and we just decode the token. And uh, there should be a semicolon there, and I think we're good to go for this as well. Let's format this, give it a save, and let's see what it looks like over here. And nice. So notice how we get the same result: edit and delete is now um, just on those and not on these items uh, but now we don't we're not also adding in a user ID to our async storage and coloring it we are just uh, extracting from the token and I would say this is the solution I like slightly better than just storing the user ID also in the async storage because it's a redundant thing but uh, the disadvantage is we did have to install a library right we had to install JWT decode uh, but I don't think that's too bad alright so this is how I'm going to continue the rest of the tutorial from here, but feel free to replace this with the Redux code um, if you prefer that, or if you can get Apollo Link State working, um, you can follow along from that. Pick your favorite solution. I'm gonna go from here because I think it's uh, a little bit simpler than the Redux version because we didn't have to set up the store and all that stuff, and I agree. We don't need it in any other components, at least right now. No need to add it. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.